doing reading between the lines. This is phrase number 16, pride goeth before a fall. Have you ever heard that saying, pride goeth before a fall, using the old English of the King James translation of the Bible? And uh, it's a phrase that gets used whenever we see somebody incredibly cocky who then gets their comeuppance. So the Bond villain who declares, I am invincible, seconds before their grisly demise. Or uh, there's the cocky athlete who slows down for the cameras at the, at the finish line and then tumbles and somebody else wins wins, or the deluded despot who's overstretched and finally overthrown. In such times, we say the phrase, pride goeth before a fall. And actually, it's a contraction from Proverbs chapter 16, verse 18. The whole verse in the Old King James translation says, pride goeth before destruction and an haughty spirit before a fall. But we just uh, contract it to pride goeth before a fall. And if this phrase applies to anything, it, it, it really applies to perhaps the fall, the fall of humanity that's recorded for us in the Bible in Genesis chapter 3. Uh, really there we see proud ones bigging themselves up and then taking an almighty tumble. And perhaps the first proud one we're introduced to is Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. There is a crafty, wily, wise creature called the serpent. And uh, he very much is a proud one. Uh, we learn from Ezekiel chapter 28 that uh, Satan is meant to be a guardian cherub looking after Adam and Eve. And yet, as we see in Genesis chapter 3, uh, he actually strikes an alliance with Adam and Eve, and through their pride, they bring about the fall. But he's meant to be there to protect them. Uh, so often people say, you know, what's, what's Satan doing in the garden? How, you know, how can God just leave Lucifer there uh, in order to lead everybody astray? Well, actually, when he is placed in the garden, he is placed as a guardian angel, a guardian cherub. But what is the undoing of, of Satan? It's the same as the undoing of Adam and Eve. It is pride. And we can get this from Isaiah chapter 14. Again, speaking about Satan, it says, How you have fallen from heaven, O morning star, son of the dawn. You have been cast down to the earth, you who once laid low the nations. You said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit enthroned on the mount of assembly, on the utmost heights of the sacred mountain. I will ascend above the tops of the clouds. I will make myself like the most high. Do you hear the, the sin of Satan? It really is pride, bigging himself up, making himself like this lofty mountain, being like God. Uh, and that really is the exact same sin as the sin of Adam and Eve. They really wanted to be like God. Not so much with God, not under God, but like God as a competitor. Uh, we get that if we read the, uh, the story of the fall. In Genesis chapter 3 from verse 6, When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was there with her and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened and they realized that they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And he said, who told you that you were naked? Have you, have you eaten from the tree from which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, the woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, what is this that you've done? The woman said, the serpent deceived me and I ate. And so on it goes. And what we see the, the Adam and Eve doing is they're forming this alliance with Satan. They are, they are deciding to be like God. That's, that's the great promise that Satan makes uh, Eve. Um, he makes that promise uh, back in, in verse 5. You will be like God, knowing good and evil. It's this de decision between humanity and Satan to form this alliance. It's an alliance that the Lord himself must split aside. And, and that's what he's going to do in verse 15. We'll have a look at that in a few videos' time. But this really is their great sin. It's, it's the sin of pride, right? raising yourself up before God and trying to be like him rather than trying to be with him. Um, and so we can see, really, in Genesis chapter 3, the ultimate fall. Or is it? Is this the ultimate fall? Uh, actually, I think we'll see that in the Bible there is a fall that is even greater than 
the fall of mankind. And really, that, that is the fall of Jesus Christ. Perhaps we should call it the jump, uh, because here is this intentional come down, this climb down from on high in order to be with us and for us. So in Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5, here perhaps is the ultimate fall. And it is the reverse of our phrase for today, pride goeth before a fall. Verse, uh, chapter 2, verse 5. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory glory of God the Father. Here is the reverse of Adam and Eve's pride. Here is the reverse of Satan's pride. It's not so much pride goeth before a fall. Here is the humility that climbs down in order to save us. You see, we went from nothing to dust to delusions of grandeur. He, in Philippians 2, went from eternal glory to flesh to crucifixion. We amounted to nothing and laid claim to everything. He had everything and made himself nothing. Our come down was deserved. His come down was deliberate. Our uprising was demonic. His uprising was divine. Our pride caused the fall. But praise God, his humility brought salvation. Thank you.